Have you got the audio on then? Sure do. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I've got uh, pecan shells in here. It's, uh, oh, I don't know, it's five, it's 15, 17 pounds of pecan shells. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of a accelerant on here. And it's, uh, it's some uh, gasohol, or I, I think it's some gasoline and, and some diesel fuel mixed up this time. A little bit stinky, but it works all right. Okay, well, we doesn't take long to get started. I just uh, have to set this in here. And we got fire going. So now what I'll go around do is I'll go ahead and turn the air on. Here above me, it's time to push the trip a little solenoid and make it start the air start flowing. And immediately you see the fire flare up there. And uh, so it's it's uh doing all right. Well, We'll set a chimney up here. That may burn a little bit better draft on it. Okay, I'll show you again what I did before. Uh, that when I set the fuel thing in there, it was turned off. Then I turned this on, and you hear a buzzer going, and it's it's it's, it's arm ready to go, and well, just. Push that and it starts the fan and, and starts the flame going real good. And the reason for that buzzer primarily is so that when it gets down to the bottom, there's a sensor down at the bottom. And when it gets hot at the bottom, it, it kicks off the buzzer and tells you that basically your fuel has burned up. And what will happen if you don't, uh, if, if you, uh, and it also shuts off the air. And if you don't shut off the air, uh, the charcoal will burn from the bottom up, and you'll lose all your charcoal or all your biochar. So uh, just a, a safety switch. And, and by getting the buzzer on there, you can come and check it out when the buzzer goes off and make sure that it's not uh, smoking or something or not completely burned, that it didn't shut off a little bit prematurely. If it shut off a little bit prematurely, is bypass the um, shutoff circuit and, and it goes ahead and runs. And you may want to let it run for two or three to four minutes to make sure there's uh, it's burned up all the smoke. But with a little practice, you can uh, you can set the uh, sensor thermostat down at the bottom so it shuts off at just the right time. So that's. Basically, all there is to show on this, uh, it's a very simple operation. The air comes in at the bottom for the primary air, and the uh, chimney develops a little bit of draft there for the uh, secondary air, uh, which is drawn in in this gap in here. Uh, a little bit of vacuum created by the chimney effect. Now, in just uh, one or two minutes here, the fans will come on. They're also on the thermostat, and it will start blowing out a rather significant amount of heat. There's a whole lot of heat. Feel, it's funny, feel how much more heat there is on this side than there is on this side, and the fans aren't on. Yeah, that's really true. Oh, there, there they go. go. There they go. So what do you feel on the difference in the warmth, the heat, the temperature? Yeah, and uh, so uh, actually this is an 8 inch fuel container on this one right here. And uh, it, it, it's, it's quite warm. You can feel it probably maybe as much as 10 feet away there if you're standing in line for it. So over here, as we fan over here, 
And I've got another stove that's working on. It's not finished quite yet, but I'm burning it right now. And we have a, a six inch fuel container. You have a, a range in which you can adjust the heat for by adjusting the amount of uh, air that, that goes in. This is gauge air registering bolts. So that's a 12 volt fan running on six volts. If it's running on 12 volts, it burns about uh, uh, six watts of, uh, or about eight watts of power on, on uh, 12 volts. When, it, when it's running on uh, six volts, it's only burning about uh, two watts of power. And uh, anyway, in this fuel container here, I'm just testing this out with pellet fuel as opposed to the uh, pecan shells I used in the other uh, burner here. And we'll be getting about twice as long a burn out of the uh, pellet fuel, we, we believe. Uh, we know it burns a lot longer, but this is the first time I've ever done a test with a stopwatch to see exactly how long we will burn. The, um, the difference in this one is this top will, will, will swivel around. Right now, I won't go straight right now because I uh, didn't get a long enough extension cord going back to the fans in the back, but uh, I'll make another extension cord up to transfer the 12 volts back to the fans. Well, they, they, these are uh, computer fans. They're relatively large computer fans. Each will draw a half amp, which uh, means that each one is uh, about uh, uh, about six watts of power. I'm running them at full speed and running two of them. And so the two of them together are pulling 12 watts, which is most of the power that's being used. All at 12 volts, so that you don't have any problems if you want to uh, hook it up to your cigarette lighter or your car, or, or have a battery, or have a solar system. So you want to use uh, on 12 volts, you can do, the, do that. Right now, we're using uh, computer power supplies to drop the 110 volt uh, down to 12 volts. A little bit of power consumed in that, but it's not very much power, so there's practically no energy cost in operating these stoves. Um, this one uh, has made a little bit different than the other one. Uh, I started out, I, I bought a 8-quart um, Dutch oven that I'm using for the firebox in here. And um, the heat exchanger is mounted on the lid, so consequently we can just turn it around uh, to whatever direction we want to turn it, as long as the cord is long enough between the two of them. Right now it isn't long enough for me to straighten it up and face it out front. But uh, the reason you need a firebox is if you run the fire directly in these tubes where, where the uh, fans are running and pulling the heat off from them, it'll quench the fire and cause smoke to come out. But right now, both of these, neither one of them, I, I don't think you can smell anything right now. And these are just open chimneys. There, there's nothing, uh, there's uh, there's no chimney outside. It's not vented outside, just vented here in the room. And uh, now, you know, you're obviously not gonna do this inside a home. You're gonna put a chimney outside, uh, whatever. And they can smoke on shut down if they're not shut down at the proper time. But as long as you shut them down at the proper time, there'll be a very negligible amount of smoke, even in the open spaces like this. You yeah, probably won't even smell it in here. So the back portion where the uh, fans are, but it, it shows a little something about how efficient the heat exchanger is. Uh, and uh, coming out of the top of these chimneys, it's, it's, uh, we have most of the heat out of there. It's, it's down to probably around 200 degrees Fahrenheit coming out of the chimney. So it's not going to start any fires. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see here. Uh, 
is 230 degrees on this one. Uh, this one. This was 153 degrees, 132 degrees right up on the very top there. So uh, that accounts for us using a little bit smaller fuel container, a little bit less heat going through this one. And the other one at the top, what's the temperature? It, it was, uh, it was, uh, oh, 270 degrees. Wonderful. And your box up here? And the box here? Yeah. Well, yeah. the box here is, uh, is about uh, 295 degrees. Now, if you actually come down here closer, we've we got six, seven hundred degrees down here on the box. That's 550 right there. Shine inside the tube. 595, 585, 595, 595, 595, 595, temperature. Go down here a few more inches and down to 300 degrees. Down here is 146 degrees. It's down to right there. How long is it? <clears throat> Say that again. It's been around about 50 minutes so it's right there so we're, we're set to run about looks like about three hours so far. Really? It looks like it'll be about three hours to burn the pellets. Where the um, the pecan chips at the same setting, uh, the pecan chips at the same uh, voltage on, on the primary air fan burn uh, an hour and 40 minutes. So this is almost twice as long for the pellet fuel. How much and is the fuel, you figure? Uh, this pellet fuel is, uh, you know, it's about... Hmm, Two hundred and forty dollars a ton, or something. That's two thousand pounds. So it's a, uh, it's just a slightly over ten cents a pound. And we probably have uh, fifteen pounds of fuel in the container right here. So there's actually a dollar fifty worth of pellet fuel in there. Well, a little bit about efficiency here on this. What we're, what's, what's happening here is we're putting out about 20,000 BTUs of heat right now. Now, 20,000 BTUs is about equivalent to, to five electric, uh, uh, er, to four electric heaters uh, running on, 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 high, uh, on a high setting. And to do that, we're, we're uh, we're using 15 pounds of, uh, or a dollar and a half's worth of uh, pellet fuel. It's 15 pounds of fuel and a dollar and a half, the approximate cost of it. And we're going to get out of here uh, a pound and a quarter of, oh, well, we're going to get out of here uh, five pounds of uh, biochar. And those five pounds of biochar would be about one and a quarter gallons of biochar. And right now on the internet, most of the uh, sites are charging uh, like $50 for a five gallon bucket. So that's about $12 and a half worth of uh, biochar according to the internet prices. And we are only paying a dollar and a half for the fuel. And if you figure it that way, that's free heat. <laughs> it's, it's heat that pays you. So this is this not a, not, the economics work out quite beautifully. And, and they work out in the home much better than they do. If you're generating electricity from uh, biomass, um, well, assuming you're making, hopefully assuming you're making biochar, uh, about 70% uh, of the heat is going to be wasted. 
So you're only converting about 30% of that heat into electricity. Whereas if you're burning it in the home, you're using a very high percentage of the heat. A little bit of it goes out the chimney, but uh, you know, almost um, 85, 90% of all the heat that you're producing, you're using in the home. And you only make biochar when you need the heat. You don't uh, you use it for water heating, you can use it for cooking. But you only you only use it when you uh, when you need the heat, and then the biomass will store indefinitely. It'll wait for you to need the heat. So it's like a 100% efficient battery, and the biomass is. It, it, it holds on that heat for years and years before it would uh, go away. So it's to uh, change the heat. Actually, it's pretty hot coming out of here. <laughs> a little uncomfortable. Uh, we got a little adjustment screw on here. And uh, get the screwdriver in the right place. So here we'll turn it down to about oh, turn it around about seven volts. That's seven point oh two volts, and it was uh, seven point eight nine or something like that before. So that slows it down a little bit. So we, we can we can probably adjust this down to uh, even a little bit lower, and you can adjust it up a quite a bit higher to get a lot of heat. But uh, the, the the heat and the burn time are inversely proportional. The more heat you get out of it, uh, the shorter the burn is going to be. But within a within a certain range, it doesn't really make all that much difference as to how much biochar you get. You get about the same amount of biochar, unless you burn it extremely hot, in which case some of the charcoal or some of the biochar will be burned up. Hey, uh, we're burnt out. It, it shut off automatically. Uh, the alarm, the buzzer went on, and, and so then I shut the power off when the buzzer went on. And it's been sitting for quite a while, so it's cool now. But you can dump the material when it is hot. I'm gonna just uh, lift this out of here. Doesn't take very long. Dump it in the bucket here. See, there's still some, still some sparks left in here, even though the been quite a, it happened, it's been uh, almost 18, 18 hours so since it was uh, done. So I'll put a little bit of water on that to make sure all the fire is out. And that's all there is. Fill it up and you can set it right back in and light it again. It probably takes not much more than about a minute to do the whole operation. You have uh, an extra canister, you can have it full and ready to put right in there and you'll be without heat only, uh, you won't be without heat at all. The fans will keep be running from the retained heat in here and they'll be putting out heat continuously and they'll never shut off if you put it in and, and, and light it again. And remember that if it's too much heat, you can turn it down some with voltage control but if you really need to cut down the heat or increase the heat, you go to a different size uh, fuel canister and use a um, use a um, six inch one. Uh, is the next size smaller, but we can make few smaller than that. I made a four inch diameter one for my barbecue but because the six inch one just simply put out too much heat. The other stove that we had burning uh, on, uh, yesterday uh, was um, had a six inch uh, canister in there with pellet fuel and, uh, and it, uh, it was burning quite vigorously and it actually only burned two and a half hours. I thought we were going to get three hours out of it but the next time I'll cut down the air because I think it will have burned quite well. Don't know why pellets take less air to burn than pecan shells, but that seems to be the way it is. Each fuel is different. 
And there's actually some difference between each time I get pecan shells. Uh, some of them have more fine material in it and maybe be a little denser and actually have more heat in it. Uh, so it would be a little bit different characteristics. But uh, that's one nice thing about pellet fuel is uh, most of it would be very, very consistent. Uh, but as a whole, pellet uh, pecan sh shells are, are quite consistent and wood chips might be even less consistent than pecan shells, but they can be used to and just a matter of getting used to it and knowing what fuel you're using and making the proper adjustments because they should be able to tolerate a very, very large variety of fuels and it's a very simple kind of a batch. Uh, um, processor here so you can build one yourself if you want to you know there's no secrets there's lots of information on top lit up drafts on the uh, on the internet uh, and uh, I, we haven't seen a whole lot for stoves that can be used inside but uh, but the principles for operation are, are all over the internet hundreds or thousands of sites and videos that, 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 that describe that. So one thing we keep plan on doing with this design is to keep on improving it a little bit and, and making it adaptable and then burning some of the heat to a cooktop for cooking and, uh, and to a water heater for, for heating hot water. The cooking is uh, something that's very important for our, our major plans right now is to introduce these just across the border in Mexico, in Palomas, Mexico. And people down there simply cannot afford the uh, propane gas to do their cooking with. It, it just, the economy is extremely bad. And that's not uh, a big a problem on this side for just for cooking, but uh, down there they, they have a hard time affording enough to, to uh, uh, enough gas to, to cook their food with, and they don't have any heat at all. Most people, very few people, have heat, and you know it gets down into the 20s here uh, a number of times each winter, and it can be really cold, and especially when the homes are not insulated very well. So there's a super need for this kind of uh, uh, heater, uh, space heater, in, in, uh, and convertible to use it for multiple purposes in, in, uh, in third world countries, and especially in uh, more temperate zones of the third world countries. Here, I'm seeing some steam come up. Are you on? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, so I'm going to pour a little of water in here so it doesn't melt my plastic bucket. If it was a steel bucket, you could um, just put a tight top on it. So it's almost out. But this, uh, uh, there's been times when I haven't put water in and burn holes in the plastic bucket, melt some hole in the plastic buckets. So now we've got the uh, all the heat out of the biomass and the real prize is right here in this bucket. This, this is a soil additive that has uh, many, many of the soil scientists and uh, agricultural people are saying it has a half-life of perhaps a thousand years. And it's, it's inert but it's, a, it, uh, it's a housing for the microbes and uh, charcoal or carbon this kind of charcoal is, is uh, very close to activated charcoal, but it has very unique electrical properties where it attracts the nutrients and holds on to them. So as a general rule, the uh, biochar reduces the need for either chemical or uh, organic fertilizer by 50% and just generally improves the health of the soil because uh, the soil is actually a living uh, organism with uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands of different micro 
organisms in it. And this, uh, this is what keeps the soil he he healthy and what keeps the uh, humus into the soil it is uh, paying attention to the uh, feeding the microbes and having a place for them to live, sort of like in the biochar. Say that again. That one's <laughs> that one is on camera. <laughs> we will cut that one. Oh, we got that on. <laughs> we have that on tape. We'll, we'll cut that one. <laughs> uh -huh. No. What about this the one? The reason is this, yeah, is, right. this is back in the back. This is back in the back. <laughs> uh, rest your arm up cut, there again. Cut the whole thing on. <laughs> Show them how good it is. Put your arm up there. Yeah, that's it. See. Yeah. yeah. Once bit, twice shy, right? Huh? Yeah. Once bit, twice shy. <laughs> okay.